everyone, welcome back. Today I have a hopefully short and sweet video for you, focusing on one popular eyeshadow technique that might be a struggle for you. Even as a makeup artist for over 20 years, the cut crease eyeshadow technique is a struggle for me. And the main reason why this technique is such a struggle for me is because I do have hooded eyes. I'm also in my 40s, so the skin on my lid is not as taut, and it's not as easy to get that sort of crisp, unblended line. And for those of you that aren't familiar with what a cut crease is, it's basically when there is a stark contrast between your transition color and your lid color. It's very sharp, and there's really no blending involved between the two areas, the transition, or crease shade and the lid shade. This technique really makes the eyes look more open and it can be very natural like I've done here or it can be much more extreme where I've seen some of these makeup artists and YouTubers use glitter in that lighter area or some sort of light shimmer and it looks really beautiful. So I just happened to be watching a YouTube video the other day and it was put out by Maybelline and it featured the beautiful model Emily DiDonato having her makeup done by the uber-talented Erin Parsons, who is the global makeup artist for Maybelline. And as I'm watching this beautiful look that she did, I saw her do this trick that I'm gonna show you to cut the crease in this tutorial. And Emily's lids, the model, her lids are a little bit hooded. They're not as extreme as mine, but they're hooded. And when she showed this trick, I went, what? How have I, number one, never thought of this, and number two, never seen this trick before. So I can't take credit for this tip on how to achieve the perfect cut crease every single time, especially on a hooded eye. That goes to Erin Parsons. But the reason why I'm doing this video is because I know many of you might never stumble upon that video, and I thought this trick was too good not to share in its own video. So if you're interested in seeing what that trick is, then keep watching. All right, I've got you nice and zoomed in so we can get started. So I started the eyeshadow application much like a lot of us do by placing a transition shade into my crease and blending it back and forth in a windshield wiper motion. And for this palette, I am using the same one Erin used in that tutorial. This is the Maybelline City Mini Palette in Matte About Town. So, so far I have used these two shades right here. Now here comes the easy trick. I'm taking a Q-tip. I wish I had one of those pointy ones. I feel like it would work better, but I just have this regular Q-tip using some Neutrogena eye makeup remover, but you can use any brand. And I'm dipping the Q-tip in the makeup remover, wiping off a little bit of the excess. And then I'm taking the Q-tip, looking right into a mirror and seeing where I have that fold, I'm kind of dabbing the remover right there and then swiping off all the excess eyeshadow. And what that's doing is it's giving me the perfect placement for that cut crease. Now when Erin did it, it was a little bit more crisp. This is only my second attempt at this. And as I mentioned, I think if I had a more pointed Q-tip, it would be a little bit more precise. But I still think this is genius because of the fact that when I've tried to do cut creases in the past, I've never really been able to figure out where to make the so-called cut. And this does it absolutely perfectly. I am going to take just a little bit of concealer on a synthetic brush, just a tiny, tiny bit, and just kind of emphasize the cut a little bit more. Now with a mature eye, like I have as well, um, it, it's also a little bit more difficult because my lids aren't as taut. So. That's another factor that always played into why I would rarely do, rarely do a cut crease. And 
And then I'm gonna take this shade from the City Palette, or Mini City Palette, and another flat concealer brush, and then go over that space. So if you look at it, it's much higher than where you would think it should be. And I noticed that in the video that I watched, but it made Emily's eyes look so much larger. I'm just so happy with the way this looks. Now I'm gonna finish off the eye just by applying a little bit of this darker brown to my outer corners. And I'm trying to not cover the cut crease area too much. And of course, if you don't have hooded eyes, um, you can leave the whole area bare. You don't have to only do the front part. You can do this whole part over here, but I have a lot of puffiness and droopiness on the outer corner. So I like the look of a lifted outer corner. So that's why I typically always apply a darker shade to my outer corner. So these are the finished eyes. I think it came out pretty good. This was my very first attempt. This was my second attempt. And I assume that it will only get better with practice, that I will only get better at doing this with practice. And I really do feel like it opened up my eyes. And I think I might be doing this every day now. Again, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this trick. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed and part of the Risa Does Makeup family, I would love to have you. Just hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Definitely go follow Maybelline and Erin Parsons and Emily DiDonato for more amazing makeup tricks. Now this video was not sponsored. I would have told you that in the beginning but um, I do learn a lot from all three of their Instagram pages and uh, YouTube channels. Unfortunately, Erin doesn't have a YouTube channel, but Emily does and Maybelline does, which is where I saw this trick. So that'll do it. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.